hit record um, and go ahead and dive in. So let's see. All right, so digging into badges today. Um, so again, um, what is a badge? Why open badges? Details on our open badges infrastructure. A look at the ecosystem to talk about what badge kit is. And in case some of you have been following us, you've been hearing a lot about badge kit. So we'll dive a little bit deeper into what that actually is and a little bit more. I encourage you again, there's a questions feature within the, um, the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, I will be monitoring that um, and we'll save some time at the end to answer questions, but as always, um, we will be available after the webinar, um, whether via email or um, whether you'd like to set up time to talk to us individually, um, so don't feel like you have to go crazy right now. Um, so with that, again, uh, follow us on Twitter. This is probably our most active channel. Um, Jade, um, our global coordinator, runs this and is um, very interactive, always keeping um, up to date of what's going on, not just with the Open Badges team, but Open Badges in general. Um, also, a lot of our community members use the hashtag pound open badges. Um, so it's just a great uh, way as well to um, stay in touch with uh, what's going on in the world of badges. So getting started. Um, so before we really dive into what badges are, I would like to take a look at, you know, what are the problems that we need to solve? So really, where did this, where did the idea kind of come from? And what we have is, is very much of an environment right now where the education and workforce are changing. And I, and I think this goes without saying, but, but it's something to really highlight. Um, and, a, and a good way to really quickly look at this off the bat is, this is a quote um, given last year in uh, TechCrunch by um, the, the head of HR at Google. And was saying that, you know, um, GPAs are worthless as a criteria for hiring and test scores. Your ability to perform is completely unrelated to how you were in school because the skills you acquire are different. Now, we don't say this to basically say, you know, you shouldn't go to the GPAs are bad or anything. No, but what this highlights is just a very big employer is basically saying that they're looking for more than just a GPA in a sense. And so this leads into this idea that there is a tension between the economic mobility, innovation, and access. So, so that is felt all across um, the world, not just within the US. And so, so really what we like to do is kind of break this down by sectors to really get to understand um, where some of that tension um, and, and um, ultimate um, change is happening. So taking a look at uh, K through 12, um, so current system is, 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 you know, could be slated as broken. Um, dropout's not really ready for college or career. Um, there's a big interest in exploring new approaches. So this idea of personalized learning and competency-based. And there's not necessarily the right, um, you know, accountability measures or, or credentials more or less in line. And so here you have a, um, a, a 10th grader, Isabel. So she struggles with some subjects in school, but she nets out to average despite doing many things well. Um, she's involved in many activities, but there's no real way of keeping her from falling behind. Another example is you have the teacher side. So Tawa, seventh grade, must teach to test, um, no room to innovate or att um, tend to the individual needs and no insight into the student's interests. And so, so two examples that kind of show you that there's that, that need on both sides, the student and the teacher, as a means to, to really go beyond what is um, necessarily what today um, is within education. Uh, also, after school. Um, so we have very strong after school networks um, in the US, um, and it's just a very compelling learning environment. There's so much going on. Um, you know, the, the, the skills that they're learning are, are even beyond, well beyond what necessarily is going on in school. But it's not really seemed as counting as school. It's seemed as after school. And so there's no real connection between what's going on in those programs and actually within school. So you have Eduardo, who's a seventh grader. He's below average student in school, um, but he's an emerging technologist and mentor in after school and doesn't realize that this is legitimate learning, like doesn't see this as a connection to what he is in school. Another example is higher ed um, universities. So again, all, all things that are very apparent, um, expensive, inconsistent. There's a growing gap between universities and career, and it's a monopoly on credentials. And so, you know, um, in talking to a lot of employer groups, it's, it's, it's hard for them to find the, the people that they need based on the skills. And it's also hard for the students to find jobs based on the skills that they get. And so there's that need of, of basically a connection. So you have Ahmad, who's a recent grad, brings transcript to a job interview, surprised that this means little to his employer. He just went to school and did everything, and the, but he has no way to demonstrate his um, skills or granular learning overall. Um, then taking a look at workforce, too. So workforce is changing. It's not always enough to just have a degree. Uh, new skills are important and emerging, but employers can't find the right match. So like I'm saying, it's you have one end on the student, but then also one end on the employer. And so 
You can take a look at it from the worker standpoint. So Sal, displaced worker, does not know what skills he needs for the job. University is not an option, but he has no way to demonstrate the skills, all the skills that he's been learning on his job. Um, you also have Joelle, who's the hiring manager, so can't find the right people um, and has hired the wrong person at, at big cost and really wants better tools for assessing what candidates can do that go just beyond a resume, that go just beyond a piece of paper. So all of those quick examples um, really just start to demonstrate that they're that, you know, really right in front of us, education and workforce is changing and that there really is no single institution that necessarily can, can prepare someone, but rather this, this need of a connected ecosystem of learning. And so, you know, at the individual basis, there is this need for credentials um, that can capture and communicate the learning and skills that's happening all around in all contexts that can be plugged in to get things like jobs and so forth. So enter in, that's where um, Mozilla Open Badges really, um, really came forward here is, is, is taking a look at that tension and, you know, what was changing um, and really saying, how can we use a digital way to ultimately help connect um, that learning? And so, so Open Badges is really about reimagining credentials. Um, but before we dive into deeper with Open Badges, let's just take a look at what badges are in general. And so um, badges are digital representations of a skill or achievement. So it's something digital and it's something that has the evidence behind it. But badges aren't necessarily anything a new concept. So um, scouting may be the first example that comes to mind. So, you know, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, very predominant. Um, badges were earned for different skills, different challenges unlocked and seen as a very good source of honor um, you know, um, my fiance was a Boy Scout and still to this day has his badges up in his office. And, you know, because for him, it really demonstrated the skills that um, that that he learned at that certain time in his life. And so um, but what we've seen is that even beyond that, they started to represent more achievements on the Web. And some of those achievements are fun and for social status. So this is Foursquare. So um, a website that really is about um, unlocking um you're based on geolocation if you go to different, whether it's a yoga studio or a, or a restaurant or something, but it's basically um, uh, showing off where you're at and based on the, the number of times you've checked in, whether at an airport or so forth, you get a certain badge. Um, and that badge is, is used for social, so to share with your followers of, of really um, what your activity level is. Um, but what we've seen is beyond this social trend is that their badges are increasingly um, basically showing off skills that are real and 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 that they they represent real tasks and so this is a really good example. Um, Stack Overflow is um, a developer community. It's very simple. Basically, engineers can go and sign up, um, and it's and it's a place for them to go um, and ask questions. So these questions could be of any any length or any diff level of difficulty, whether how do you bold this in, in Node or Java or, you know, to something uh, really intricate. And what it was, was other developers and engineers were responding. And what they found was, is that you could very quickly get a good idea of what that individual's skill level is based on their responses. So whether they responded a lot, whether they answered only node questions, whether you know the, the people were saying that their response was good and helpful. And so before you know it, they created a very simple badge system. This is actually what the badges look like. Um, and, and it really started to reflect those individual skills of um, each of the engineers. And what they found was, is with this real skills, this is what employers and schools were looking for. And so um, basically on top of all this data that they got from just this very simple, um, you know, um, basically a place to go and ask questions or, or more of a form is they created a layer on top of it called Careers 2.0, which um, as the, the individual um, engineer or um, developer that was part of that community, I could choose to show off all of my badges um, on a profile um, on Careers 2.0. Uh, and basically, um, companies like Google um, and Yahoo are coming in and, and basically paying to get these results because it's a way to vet my skills versus other skills. Because being able to show off the badges that I got, whether it was a good mentor, good answers, that differentiated me. That really showed my level beyond just saying, I am an engineer, I know this language. And so, so really you saw this trend of, of, of that need of seeing that full complete picture of that individual beyond just a piece of paper and so forth. 
And so that, that is what badges. So, so why badges? And so um, really badges are the, the beauty of them is they can com, uh, capture the complete learning path and really help build and communicate repu uh, reputation and identity. And the reason why this is, is because basically they, they're, they're reinventing the existing credential because they're granular, evidence-based and transferable. And those are like three buzzwords that if I said I could flag, it's that granular evidence base and transferable. And, and, and really what that means is that, that when you get a badge, that the information is behind the badge so that, that it's no longer of me handing a piece of paper to you and it listing, you know, the, the, my main skills, and then you having to necessarily call someone to see if those are real or trust that I'm telling you the truth. You can see the badges I get and click through and see the evidence behind it, basically. Um, so, it, and, and badges, you know, with this whole idea of, of capturing the complete learning path is that they, they're able to really um, surface skills and competencies and they're, you know, give people a way to, to not only sh get recognition for what they know, but also introduce them to new things that they might not know about. So it, it really helps them complete this, this full path. Um, and even better, you know, than just the, the individual badges, this idea of a badge ecosystem. So this idea that you can earn badges for multiple things um, across multiple, um, uh, basically, issuing organizations within the ecosystem, which is where really digital badges transformed into open badges. And so, so our idea with open badges is that the individual earner or learner can get badges from multiple places and be able to store those badges for themselves. So it's not a closed system where, you know, if I um, was going to um, one school or working at one company that I could only get badges within there. And then the second I left that school or left that company, they didn't mean anything. I couldn't take them. It's this idea of really building up the ecosystem. So let's take a little bit diver, um, deeper dive into kind of what that means. And so we have a, a good graphic to kind of show um, the overall process. So you have the learner. Um, basically, the learner can earn badges, whether from uh, job training, online learning, a uh, volunteer program, but again, this more of the ecosystem can get them from multiple places. What the learner does is store those badges within the badge backpack. So has from, the, from this area has the ability to choose um, if she wants badges to be shown as public, private. Um, she can create different levels if she wants a section to show off you know, badges for the, the online training or badges for um, cooking or so forth. She has the ability to do that within her backpack. Um, and then she can share them. So she can share them on Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, um, you know, working on different other platforms like LinkedIn and so forth. Um, she can share them on her website and she can build a digital resume. So, so that idea of being able to take the skills that she has and really showing them off. Then from there, basically her personal networks and sites and so forth, they can connect for job opportunities, lifelong learning and unlock new possibilities. And so it's again, really about creating that complete learning path and really being able to show and recognize all the skills that you had. So just another look at this. And so this is where the, the Mozilla is what's called the open badge infrastructure is we basically create what is an easier way to say it is the plumbing. So we, we create the badge pack pack, but we create the APIs that really let um, the, all the different issuing organizations in the ecosystem be able to develop their own badge systems. But through the API, then the learner can take it and save it in their badge backpack and, and be able to push it out. So again, free and open source software um, and, you know, being with Mozilla where we are really focused on um, open um, interoperable initiatives, um, uh, Mozilla's Open Badges was a perfect fit. Um, so we create the technology um, really behind it that helps individu uh, individual organizations become issuing organizations or displayers and so forth um, as they go through um, the badging um, overall process. Um, and then in the badge ecosystem, um, it's more a badge is more than just a badge. Um, and that's, again, another really important thing. A lot of times people say, um, so it's just a pretty picture, right? Um, but in reality, it's much more than that. It really is much more than that. And what we did was, as part of the open badge infrastructure, was really come up with the main um, uh, ultimate criteria that each badge has to have. And so this is a great graphic that was done by a member of our um, community that kind of shows, once you skin off the pretty picture of the badge, really what's behind it. And so so what we did was we came up with the open badge standard. Um, and so this is the, the main air, um, uh, information that needs to be included with each badge. But again, the beauty of, of the product is it's up to you as 
the issuing organization to really define what it is that these are. So each organization can um, come up with the criteria, can come up with the evidence and so forth. And then our APIs just basically allow that, um, that information to happen and for that individual to be able to save the badges into their backpack. Um, so just a look at, you know, um, kind of how this initiative has really um, sparked is um, the idea really came around um, in, you know, I'd say around 2010 um, at a, um, a big conference um, in Spain where, where people really got around and talking of this idea of connected learning and really, really being able to need to help individuals and connect with jobs um, and, and started to take, um, you know, a a form, I guess you could say, and it, and it got um, uh, picked up by Mozilla and was funded by the MacArthur Foundation. Um, and then um, the version 1.0 of the Open Badge Infrastructure was launched last year. I'm um, sorry, um, it was, yeah, last year, last March. Um, and at that time, there was 98 issuers um, and only 1,000 badges. And today, and a lot of this is just through very much organic growth, um, you know, as much as we'd love to say, we've talked to every single one of the 1,900 issuers. Um, in reality, we talk to a fraction of them and help, but all the technology has helped that. So, um, and we've issued over 210,000 um, badges through the Open Badges infrastructure um, and looking for this number to continue to increase um, as we um, get more people on board. So this is just a quick look, um, and this is a, is a little techie, but um, well, again, we'll make sure this sends out, but this just goes to show you kind of how the actual um, infrastructure or quote unquote, the plumbing can work and how um, on the left side, you have the issuers, which could be websites, organizations, education providers. Um, and then basically through the funnel, you see in the middle, which is the badge backpack. Um, and then you go over to the other side, which is a displayer. So again, the the everything in the middle is kind of what's included in the open badge infrastructure, and and any organization can be an issuer and a displayer, or it could be one or the other. And so so we have different APIs to basically support that as well. Um, so so enough of the tech stuff. So we took a look at what a badge is. We took a look at why badges, but let's take a look at who's using badges, and so how are they being used? And so the best way I really like to do this is to to revisit our stories to then talk about how badges could help with each unique situation and then talk about some um, existing organizations that are working with it. So again, you have Isabel, struggles with some subjects, nets out to average despite doing many things well, um, and no way to keep her from falling behind. If badges are involved, she gets badges for activities. She rewards granular accomplishments um, and strengths in school. She uses a combination of badges to get better understanding and guide her um, and um, includes badges on college applications. Again, Tawa, seventh grade teacher, must teach to test, um, no room to innovate, um, uh, and no insight into the student interests. Um, but issuing badges for skills, she can, she can do them for extra learning. She can capture all of the soft skills that are going on well just outside of the, um, of the actual um, course material. Um, she can also earn badges herself. So again, I think that that's one of the really important things here is that um, it's important to, to keep lifelong learning going and especially teachers, you know, constantly, uh, technology is constantly ever evolving. And so basically, um, you know, it's really important to make sure that even teachers are staying on top of their um, of their uh, their skills and so forth. And so badges can be used as a way for them to show off their learning. Um, so a good example of this is a school in um, California called the Corona, uh, Corona Norco School District, um, and they recognized that students weren't motivated by A's, um, you know, badging coursework um, was actually something that they really wanted to look into um, to see if there was a way to motivate students um, just beyond, again, the letter grade. And so what they did is they created a, a, a pilot program um, called their Passport Program. And the goal is that the completed passport leads to local college acceptance. And so this is a look at just kind of walking through. Um, and so they, they created different badges all the way from elementary school to high school. Um, and you could get badges for certain courses that you did, but you could also get badges for skills that were um, taking place even outside of those courses for behavior and so forth. And then they're working with local schools, um, um, local community colleges as a way to plug in. Um, another example of this um, is um, 
DePaul University um, in Chicago um, is also um, working with um, local schools in Chicago um, so that they can start to work to accept badges um, with college applications. So, th so there's an there's an increase in this connection of people going through the the K through 12 funnel and then really trying to make sure that all that uh, that was acquired even just beyond just the college application can plug in for um, acceptance college acceptance and even in some cases uh, college credit. So also looking at after school. So again, Eduardo, below average student, emerging technologist, doesn't uh, think it's legitimate learning. So badges can be used for capturing um, all of that information and all of that skill that is happening in the after school network. Um, and also we ultimately can carry back with him to school. Um, and then it can really start to help to build up his reputation because again, those are things that he was very interested in um, and, and, and ultimately learning. And so, so it was an opportunity for him to connect both platforms. And so the best example of this is um, the Providence After School Alliance um, they've been very active in working um, in Providence with not only the school systems, but also um, local universities. Um, and so, so really getting badges for that expanded learning that's happening, whether it's debate team, whether it's, um, you know, engineering skills, um, again, uh, science and so forth. Um, and then working with the high school and the community colleges um, for that credit and so forth. Um, and so this is just, again, a look at... Um, there are some of their badges that they did. And again, this is a good example because it just goes to show you as you're thinking about your badge system that, that each organization can, can basically determine what badges fit best for their, their, um, their platform and so forth. Um, and so, so Providence is, is really leading the way, but has sparked a lot of the, the overall conversations with the, the after school networks across the U.S. about how these connections can better be made. Uh, um, Ahmad, again, uh, brings transcript to jobs, surprised that this means little to the employer, um, and there's no way to demonstrate skills or granular learning. So um, badges for these, uh, can get badges for the skills that are developed in his courses. Um, he can share in his digital resume, um, and basically the, the key thing is, is it tells a more complete story. So it shows his complete learning path, um, and it separates him from basically, you know, the other let's say 500 applicants that came from a university that kind of had the same thing, that there's, there's more evidence behind actually the skills that he learned. And so um, a good example is Purdue University. And so um, Purdue basically kicked off a, um, again, also called the Passport um, Program um, within some of their graduate classes last year. And really, again, same concept is that they were, were finding that there was so much learning that was going on within their, their grad programs beyond just you got a 4.0 or, or, or a, a single grade to really show off everything that they were learning, whether labs, whether internships and so forth. And so really wanted that, that flexibility for that student to be able to capture all of that. But then on the flip side, really wanted to empower the professors as well to be able to, to acknowledge those skills. And so, so they have a badge, and this is a, a look at the admin of their, their program, where the professor could go and basically create a badge, let's say if they were doing a new, um, a new assignment or a new lab or something, that they could issue um, to um, the students. And this is a good quote from um, the vice president of um, IT at um, Purdue, who basically, you know, again, it's hitting on these main things. Students were learning in many ways and across many varieties. Um, and basically, there's there's so much more than just the formal lectures in the homework. And so the passport really gives the, the faculty and advisors a way to recognize and validate the skills of the students. So, so it's helping from both the, the student standpoint because they're getting the recognition, but it's helping from the, the faculty standpoint as a means for them to, to recognize that and really validate what's going on. Um, another example, um, you know, is, is the, the open education, so code school. So, you know, we, we've seen... The, the massive increase um, in uh, online education. Um, and Code School is a good example where, um, again, they were teaching, um, you know, again, what it is, code, uh, coding to um, engineers. And a, that is very much of an environment um, or a degree that you find that a lot of today's engineers are self-taught. And that's not to say that they didn't go through the formal channels, but there's um, different um, languages coming out all the time, or there's different additions within the existing languages. And so they really wanted to make sure that there was a way for um, individuals who were taking their courses to really be able to 
um, to show off the skills that they were they got basically. And so they they created a, a badge system to really um, to really show off the the skills and, and empower the individuals taking their courses to be able to capture um, their learning. I will also say that we're working with a lot of other um, MOOC platforms because um, it's it's kind of archaic, but some of the MOOC platforms today actually do give you a PDF certificate. Um, and so we're working with them as a way to see, um, to introduce badging as a way to show off um, and, and also be able to help create um, pathways to, to different um, uh, learning uh, degrees, basically. Um, so also working in the workforce. Um, so again, Sal, um, is displaced, doesn't know um, what skills he needs for a job, and un university is not an option. He's been working a lot um, and, and has no way to demonstrate that. So he can earn badges for this. He can view badges, um, you know, that are recommended by a particular industry so he can see ultimately, um, you know, what potentially skills could be needed to um, achieve a certain role or to get a certain role. Um, and he can, you know, find different ways to, to develop those skills that are outside of, you know, traditional university as that wasn't an option for him. And he has the ability to share his badges with potential employers so he can he can share the evidence of what he learned um, on the job. Um, a great example of this, and, and I, I just I really love talking about um, this example because I think they've done some amazing things and I think it really demonstrates um, um, the, the power of, of badges is they use badges to define skills that are important to the industry. So the Manufacturing Institute has the connections with the manufacturing companies. So they know based on what the companies are telling them what skills are needed um, for, for certain roles. Um, and then they also on the, on the flip side can make sure that they're badging and recognizing um, on the job training um, um, for, for actually students that are going through or, or workers more or less. And so it, it ties directly to the jobs. And so, so this is a look at um, from a student perspective Basically, they're unlocking badges as they go, but there are certain pathways. So as they unlock a, a certain badge, they can um, also see that if they um, you know, go a certain pathway, it can lead to a specific manufacturing role. And so it, it helps guide them um, to ultimately know that the skills that they're unlocking are going to lead to a job. And then on the manufacturer's perspective, they already know what skills are needed within certain jobs. And so they can um, help build out that pathway so that when that, that student goes through, they know at the end that that student has all the skills that they need. And so the Manufacturing Institute really kind of helps with that structure of being able to balance the what the employers need, what skills they need, and help guide the student to get there. So again, it's, it's really about that full process of how do we recognize the learning that that student's doing? really help to show their complete path, but also in the end, really be able to connect them with jobs. So also in the workforce, you have the hiring standpoint. So can't find the right people, has hired the wrong person and wants better tools for assessing. Um, and so again, you can search, um, badges can be valuable on this end because you can search through the badges of the candidates. You can see what's behind it. So to the point that I made a little bit earlier um, of, you know, of how, um, I don't have to look at just a piece of paper and trust that that individual is telling me, um, you know, the right information is that there's evidence behind it. So I can actually see what that individual has learned and done and I can find ultimate better matches for me and so that we can close this gap um, between um, education and workforce and really start to empower and help individuals. So again, a good example, Careers 2.0, I mentioned this before, the, the very simple um, uh, developer community that um, based on Stack Overflow's information, the developers can create a profile and then employers can go on and basically pay to, um, to access this information and really get to the, the heart of what those individuals know. And then another good example is Mozilla. So again, a, another big reason of why we were interested in open badges is being a tech company, we were constantly looking for really good developers and good engineers. And there was a huge gap. It was really hard and it was hard to validate some of the skills because a lot of, again, today's um, engineers um, are, are self-taught or there's some level of self-teaching when it comes to certain um, languages. And so, so um, we really, uh, Mozilla really looked at badges as a way to really kind of show that off um, and help as well. So it was a big reason why Mozilla was also interested in um, getting involved in this initiative. So that's a look of, um, based on the sectors, um, some, some individual examples, and, and there's many more out there. Um, and, you know, if you follow um, our blog, our um, openbadges.tumblr.com, 
Um, we, we always are constantly covering um, new, uh, new issuing organizations or displayer organizations um, as they come up because um, Open Badges is not just um, an initiative or a project that's in the U.S. We have a lot of international interest, um, a, a, a ton of great work going on um, in the U.K. Um, and in Scotland um, and Italy, well beyond. Um, just so that a lot of people that are really centered at this idea of, of connected learning and how do we really um, help recognize um, and show off all types of skills um, well beyond just um, you know letter grades and really help plug in for whether internships and jobs and so forth. And so um, some really great things going on and this is where I, I really just like to highlight one of the biggest badging initiatives that we've done to date because I think it really shows um, again, um, really kind of what can happen when we talk about creating a badge system. And so um, the Chicago Summer of Learning um, uh, basically is an, uh, was an initiative last summer where there was um, one summer, so it was eight weeks. There was one primary focus that the, the city of Chicago was really focused on, which is addressing the summer drop off. Um, and so, you know, given um, some of the inner city um, schools in Chicago and so forth, the uh, teachers had really flagged that there was a huge drop off from the learning, obviously, that happens at the end of the school year and the beginning of the school year, and that um, there were um, you know, just certain inner city um, challenges with um, uh, with uh, daycare and so forth in the summer area. And so really wanted to create an initiative that that promoted learning across the entire city and really tried to engage and, and kind of improve some of the conditions. And so um, what they the really important was is they wanted to focus around the, the five um, organizing um, principles, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, so this is STEAM, and some people have heard it as STEM too. Sometimes um, um, arts isn't in there, um, but this was the main focus of Chicago. Um, and what um, we did was we worked with them. So um, um, uh, a few members of our team worked with about three core team members on their end and basically brought together a hundred different organizations throughout the city of Chicago. And so this could be anything from the public libraries to um, the parks and recreation, um, to the zoo, to um, you know specific uh, arts classes, um, but really worked with all these organizations to figure out um, what skills they would be teaching and help develop that. Badges. Um, and so um, this is a, a good look, you know, so again, um, whether it was science, whether it was the sleuth badge, because you were in the, the part um, conservatory, um, but really developed all of these different um, badges that the kids could get both at the actual organization. So let's say they went to the public library and did a certain task or did a certain participated in a certain activity, they could get the badges there, or they also could go through um, the website's uh, Chicago Summer of Learning um, and, and, and look online to see the different ones that they could get there as well. And so it was, it was basically this um, use as a way to um, engage in and recognize um, learning that was happening all around the city. And what we did was we um, we worked with all of those organizations to basically come up with um, a level of challenges. And so so this just shows that within badge system, um, there are certain badge systems that are just flat. So you just get the badges um, that you have. Um, and there is no kind of this idea of leveling up. But then certain badge system, there is this idea of leveling up where if you get a certain number of badges, it'll unlock um, basically the next level where you could get additional badges and then it will unlock the next level. And so the way that they structured theirs was that you basically could get unlock into the steam, um, the steam badges. And then once you unlocked that level, you got the mayor city badge. And then in unlocking the mayor city badge, you basically got, um, you know, access to the, the closing ceremony that had, um, you know, a, a famous local artist that was there and so forth. And so, so what this just does is this shows you that basically, you know, um, the badge system is, is really as it can kind of be what best represents um, your organization's needs, but also can be at a very um, larger level. And so again, this was working with a hundred of different organizations really coming up with what basically fit theirs and then creating a full system that, that ultimately could be to leveling up. So the good news is, again, eight weeks, um, and you know, uh, this was our, our first really big pilot. So we basically touched twenty three thousand learners and issued over one hundred and ten thousand badges. Um, and you know, this this project really introduced a, a ton of great things. Um, whether you know, as well, dealing with under thirteen year olds. So there was a platform that parents would be involved. Um, there was a back end that teachers could go as a means to um, to validate the evidence that students were. Um, 
were receiving. Um, there was an easy platform for um, people to go in, uh, the, the administrators to go in and design the badges and so forth. And so, so what this started to do was really start to create this um, lightweight set of tools um, that we worked with because um, it was the first of that kind. Um, that really supported the badging um, experience, and and I'm I'm happy to say, and 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 this is all kind of still in the works, but um, we've been in talks with um, probably about ten different cities um, in the U.S. that are looking to pilot this summer model in 2014. So so looking to to take this in, engagement model. Um, and really figure out how it works best for their school systems as a means to um, continue to encourage learning um, and support throughout the summer. And even beyond the summer, the Chicago Summer of Learning program has now um, just expanded to the Chicago, I think it's the Chicago Learning Program, where basically it's through all their breaks. So their fall breaks, their spring breaks, um, their winter breaks. Um, and so it's that idea of, of being able to continue that engagement well beyond just the summer months. Um, so again, the good news is uh, we did a lot of work for this, but it was just a really good pilot to show um, basically what um, this could do. And from this, what we found was, um, you know, towards the end of last year of surveying and talking to um, different providers is that really there was this need for these lightweight tools um, that we had created for the Chicago Summer of Learning um, there was a more of a need well beyond just that one project or well beyond the city's project. And so um, it led us to um, really starting to work with those platforms um, and create what we call Badge Kit. So um, that is the biggest thing that the Open Badges team is working on now. And again, it's really building off the foundation that we created for Chicago Summer of Learning. And some of the tools are in use now. Um, we launched last October um, the Connected Educationer Month um, uh, badging platform. And so I'm um, using some of these tools. But what we've done is we've, we've taken a step back. We've really focused our efforts on fine tuning these tools to make sure that it is what the um, what the ecosystem needs as a means to grow. And so just diving in. So um, Badge Kit is a set of open foundational tools to make the badging process easy and simple. Um, you know, what's what's an interesting point is, is, is um, Basically, uh, given a lot of the existing um, platforms out there that are issuing platforms, what we found is that it's it's actually easier to make a closed badge than it is to make an open badge right now. And so, so our thought was really to to how can we help that? How can we just provide a very very um, open foundational set of tools to make that easier um, and ultimately improve the badging experience uh, across the board um, and close the gap basically. Um, and so, so basically looking to provide that foundational tools to stoke the growth um, and, and really help organizations like you um, to really go the next step. And so I think that that's the point that we're at right now. There's many people who are saying, oh, I'm interested in this. I get this. I've been looking for something like this. Like, I, I think badges would work really well in my, my platform or in, within my organization, but what's next? Where do I get started? How do I do this? And so that thought is, is that this tools is, is really going to kind of help walk through that process. Um, and the good news is, is that, you know, they're, they're open source. So um, anyone can build on top of them. They basically can um, still be um, part of, you know, this open community where people can come in and make additions and everybody benefits from that. These are just more or less the foundational set of tools. Um, and they, they really um, build on our value of openness um, and this idea of really helping shape um, the uh, the overall um, you know ecosystem, and and ultimately really just help with all the key points. So badging um, through issuing, uh, uh, building, assessing, collecting, and so forth. And so so all of these tools, um, which we the team has been really hard to work on at work on, um, are set to launch in March of two thousand and fourteen. Um, that will um, include um, what is the the MVP. So it's the the basically the the most valuable um, parts will come out in March, and then we will continue to iterate on. Um, the first set of the tools will really be best served um, for um, organizations um, that are looking to you know um, create overall badge systems. So not necessarily just one badge off here or there. Um, and overall, um, it's uh, you know it's a a, a 
what we think that the, the it's based on the need of the ecosystem and what we've been heard, hearing. Um, and we are really excited because we think that it will really help spur some of the um, the next steps in growth um, with some of the, the organizations and stuff that we've been talking to. And so, so we're really excited about that. And again, we'll continue to keep you updated on that, but um, that's slated for launch in March, 2014. So summary again, and I'm just going to quickly go and then wrap up and it looks like I've got some questions. So um, I'll dive in. Um, and so again, open badges are the digital credentials for the modern age. Um, they are evidence-based and verified. Um, they're really about recognition of skills and achievements um, and really helping to collect across a lifetime um, of what you can do and what you do know. Um, they basically are the digital currency to carry with you and share across the web and potentially unlock, um, you know, possibilities, whether internships or jobs. And I will say that, you know, again, the, the good news is, and this is what we really like, is that um, we all, whether it is you or people within the ecosystem, again, are really focused on this idea of connected learning. And badging is one way to do that, that we are really exploring. But at the heart, we're all really taking a step back and figuring how can we better empower people, whether students, whether workers, whether employers, and ultimately just make help connect to make um, better um, better lifetimes for people. So better roles, better jobs, um, to improve lives, um, and basically just help people by really giving um, them this idea of connected learning and helping them find their path. So open badges is one way that we are very actively pursuing and super um, excited to be part of this great initiative that's really taking off. Um, but at the heart, you know, um, there are things that we still have to learn. It's a, it's a very new, um, new initiative. And so that's why we are um, super excited that we have such an active community that's, that's really contributing to this. And so what I, I love to say is that um, we ask you to get connected. It doesn't matter your level of involvement, whether you're just brand new, whether you're exploring this idea, we've got some great channels um, that really help foster um, the community's growth um, and ultimately allows you to connect in with the community. Um, a lot of the individual community members have great stories to share that we can only capture a snippet of. And so we encourage you to join our weekly community calls. So these are every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 um, Eastern time. Um, a link, so the um, link at the top, bit.ly backslash OB comms calls. Um, here you can get um, access to um, all of the past um, call agendas as well as the upcoming agenda. Um, and that is led by Jade. Um, and she walks us through each week um, a quick overview of, um, of what's going on in the badges ecosystem. And then we always have one to two community presenters who walk through their work um, and basically give an update of um, whether the, the challenges or whether the, the great findings that they're finding um, as well. So just a really good one hour. Um, the majority of the Open Badges team is on, so it's also a good time to, to connect with us and get questions. Um, and so we invite you to that. Um, we also invite you to our Google group. So this is um, a very active group that a lot of people post questions on um, or comments or press releases or um, whatever. And it's tapped in with um, many um, open badges, um, whether issuers, displayers, and so forth. So again, it's, it's, any, it's open, so anybody can join and you can take a look at the past logs. Um, we also keep this up to date um, with um, of, up, um, findings and stuff from the, the team's perspective. Um, and then we have our blog. Um, so again, this is um, very active um, as well. Jade leads this as well. Um, and, and it's a, a good glimpse as not, of not only what's going on in the Open Badges team, but what's going on in the community as well. Um, and so um, we encourage you to check that out. And as always, we're always here. So badges at mozillafoundation.org hits all the key people that you need, myself, Jade, um, and the head of our product. So we um, man that um, and are um, there to answer questions, whether you need just a little more guidance or a little more information, um, we're there to help you um, because that's ultimately our role is really helping to build this ecosystem um, and be able to provide the value. Um, again, through these channels, we can also connect you. Um, we have um, our engineers that are available um, as well through our Google group. So if the questions get a little more technical, they're there to help as well. So just overall, our role as Open Badges um, is to, to build the technology to help um, it, you know, organizations implement badge systems um, at all different levels, and then also just be there to help kind of through the process, um, knowing that, that it, it can be a little daunting when you're thinking about um, kind of next steps, um, and that's why we are here. So with that, um, that is my 46-minute um, overview of Open Badges. We've covered a lot from um, what are badges, why badges, a look at 
um, kind of what open badges means, a look at the technical stuff. Um, we do host a next webinar, which is more focused on diving deeper into that technical piece and really starting to walk through um, the system design. So, okay, so now you know you're interested in badges, but kind of what's next um, and how do you how do you basically start to think about um, of what to badge and so forth. And so um, that that uh, will host one of those in February. I'm not sure if the date's been posted yet, but we'll make sure to to include that in um, the follow up email. But it's a it's a great next step um, if you are brand new and and looking to um, to basically um, find out more information. So with that, I'm just going to go through um, and answer a few questions. Um, and I again, I would encourage you. I'm I'm going to tackle a few of these. But in case um, we don't get to all of them, then I will um, make sure to follow up um, over, um, uh, we can follow up via email. Um, and so uh, first off is, um, how do you collect information on the number of open badges issued? Um, and so that information is based on um, through all of the APIs. So any um, any or an API is means application programming interface. So it's it's basically a technical way to describe ultimately the plumbing from a from a, a tech standpoint of being able to connect um, you know one system to the other. And so so basically through any but any organization that uses the Open Badges um, API, we get um, the the data on the back end that shows. Um, how many badges were issued and so forth. Um, uh, we, you know, it's, it's all um, basically through that information, it's all in the API guidelines, but it basically allows us to see how many badges actually are being issued. Um, okay, um, let's see. How is this system managed? Is the learner's progress monitored by people or technology? Um, so I'm pretty sure overall um, the 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 open badges infrastructure is managed by the the open badges team. We provide the technology um, for that, but then it's up to the the issuing organization to create what badges that they want um, and ultimately be able to um, create that system for their audience. And so so um, the the overall, um, you know, is the learner's progress monitored? So, so that's purely based on the type of badge system that the individual issue organization creates. Um, some people um, do the monitoring through badges. So they, again, they could set up levels and so forth. Um, but basically, um, that is, is, is up to the issuing organization how they set that up. Um, you know, some are more hands-on. So, um, you know, a case like Purdue, it's a mix of both the instructors that are issuing the badges, and then ultimately um, the the technology that's being used to issue the badges. So that 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 decision is basically made um, um, up to um, the issuing organization. Um, how do you communicate the value of open badges to badge earners? Um, and so um, the uh, that, that's a great question. Um, and so what we've done so far, so like the City of Learning um, initiative, um, we basically worked with them to do a lot of outreach. So a lot of communication on what badges were, educating both parents and, and individuals. Um, you know, we do a lot through our channels, but a lot of it is also um, up to the the organizations that are issuing badges to educate what it is. And and that's one thing that, um, you know, we're really looking to to kind of help um, with um, onboarding materials. So to provide some materials that are really um, good for people um, to use when they are um, starting to issue a badge system to communicate what it is. Um, but a lot of that is up to the um you know, really to the, the community and ecosystem growth and the, as badges really start to catch on um, of, of really starting to push people. Um, but again, we encourage um, basically the, a lot of the issuing organizations to make sure that before they issue um, badges and before they create that system, that the, um, the actual uh, students or the actual individuals are going to know what that value is. And so, so a lot of that is, is working again with the issuing organization. Um, a few uh, other things. So we, we got asked, um, basically, will this be recorded? Yes, um, we are recording this um, and we will um, distribute. So everybody that registered for today's webinar um, uh, uh, provided us with an email address. And so we will be sending a follow-up email that is a link to this recording, um, as well as um, the, um, the presentation slides that you can take a look, you can use at your own. Um, we also um, have um, even decks that are 
are available. So let's say you're on the call today and, and really interested, but really want to walk some people through your organization through it. We have um, PowerPoint draft decks that are available that include a lot of today's materials so that you can use that as well. Um, and so um, overall, um, we will make sure that you have all of this information. Um, let's see. There's a few questions about, um, you know, individual. There was a question about, um, can love to learn more about the Corona Norco School, especially how they designed the badge system. Um, that's a great point. Um, a lot of this information um, is um, a mix of some case studies that we're currently working on. So we're getting ready to launch three case studies um, in the next, I'd say, about week and a half that um, look through a few of the badge systems, so one of them being the Providence After School Alliance that um, I mentioned, um, and then a few other ones that really dive into um, the process of creating the badge system, so hitting on the what worked, what necessarily didn't work. Um, ultimately, where could um, uh, those individuals basically go um, to to receive more information? Um, ultimately, just really telling the story of each of those individual organizations. And so, I um, would uh, basically um, I would encourage you to check those out once you get. Um, in addition, um, the the there is a. Um, uh, Haystack, which is um, one of the partners um, that works very closely with us, um, they um, had a competition um, last year, which was called the DML competition. Um, and out of this, um, they um, had multiple winners that they supported in creating badge systems. And they did a full um, overview of um, the, the research from that. So providing more um, lessons, best learned. And so that also is available on Haystack website. So we'll make sure to include that um, as well. Um, in our follow-up so that you know. Um, and then I'm going to answer um, one more question, um, just given the time. And then um, there's a few other questions that are on here that we will follow up with the people a little bit individually. Um, but there is a question, and this comes up a lot. Um, basically, um, there uh, seems to be a potential for abuse. So people making up their own badges, issuing their own badges to themselves. Do you see this as a big problem? Um, so this is a good question. Um, you know, we have people that ask us about spam, like who, you know, who's to say someone's not just going to go out and ask, you know, uh, create a thousand badges and say they have all these skills. And we say that, you know, that is not something that we've encountered. Um, and most of the, there is, you know, levels of, of protection that is through, you um, you know, working with the issuing organization and through um, Persona right now, which is the the verification application that we use, um, and and that that it's not something that we've encountered, but it's something that we're constantly um, thinking about and thinking about how we can put in the levels of verification and security um, throughout the open badges infrastructure. It's something that we're we're working very closely with the community to. Um, we we um, have group topics on this a lot. Um, but it's not something we've encountered yet, but we're we're really starting to think about it and we're we're really starting to um, you know make sure that we're working with people that um, to make sure that we can avoid um, things like that. but but we're not there yet. It's not taken off to the point that everybody is focused on the spamming um, and so forth. Um, and I lied. I'm taking one more question. One came in, and then again, all of you that submitted questions, there's some great stuff going on. We'll make sure to follow up. Um, but there's one final question, which I think this is a good one. Um, does Mozilla provide reps that could work with school districts, help district leaders um, and badge system? This is a great question. Um, yes, we do. Um, we um, are, are very much just kind of kicking this off. Um, you know, we have um, experts on our team that are that understand badge system design. Um, we also work really closely with other organizations like um, the Digital Youth Network in Chicago that was pivotal in the, the Chicago Summer Learning launch. So right now we're, we're kind of working together to put together um, a unified approach so that that um, when cities um, are, are looking to launch um, big badging platforms, that there is support and that there is um, help in guiding through the process, very similar to the Chicago Summer of Learning model. So, so yes, this is something that we are working on and that we are going to be launching with the cities that we're working with um, this summer as a pilot program. Um, but but um, people from um, the Mozilla or the shared ecosystem um, are definitely there to help. Um, so with that, 
I'm going to wrap up and just, you know, say again, um, thank you for your time today. Um, I hope this was beneficial. And I know we covered a lot, um, but a lot of this really builds into the general view overview of Open Badges. Um, the learning should not stop here. I encourage you to continue to check out our channels. And again, we'll make sure you have these slides and these recordings just in case it was a little fast for you. But um, overall, we like to, to stay in respect to people's times while making sure we cover the content. Um, and I and overall, you know, we just we thank you. We thank you for your interest today. Um, we look forward to the conversation continuing. Um, and as always, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, badges at MozillaFoundation.org. Um, again, that's connected to the, the three people that can answer all of the core questions that um, you could have. Um, and we basically just look forward to having you as part of our community and just continuing on this conversation of how can we how can we really um, help individuals um, and connect them with internships and jobs and really explore the, um, the idea and concept of connected learning. So with that, I hope everybody has a, a great Wednesday um, and stays warm wherever they are. Um, I am in Washington, D.C., and it's currently or it was nine degrees when I woke up this morning. So um, look forward to um, everyone um, seeing you on our channels and keeping the conversation going. Thanks, everyone.